Cool. So I'm joined today by my good friend Hugh Purser in Cambridge, England, and we're going to talk about the Mandela chart. Mandela chart, and uh, one in particular that I made that kind of represents my legacy. I thought it might be worth uh, exploring with a little bit of a few questions. Excellent. Well, uh, a great pleasure to be with you again today. Um, so I'd like to really kick off, uh, not just for myself, but everyone who's listening, who might not know exactly what the chart is. Can you just sure. run us through some of the basic background? Sure. Uh, the Mandala chart is a three by three matrix. So there are nine squares. And in the digital version, you can click on the letter this is A through H. You can click on the letter and it takes you down one layer. So you have an additional eight. So you have eight by eight, 64 squares of, of content, if you will, in eight okay. themes. Now this was uh, uh, originally comes from Kukai because it's a Buddhist, uh, the idea of the mandala. But uh, <clears throat> my uh, teacher, uh, Matsumura Yasuo Sensei, uh, discovered this and he said, what if you took out all the Buddhist iconography and just used the frames as a framework for thinking? And then he, he created this thing and I, I use it all the time. I, and I, there are two metaphors that I use to explain it. One is a kind of a zoom lens for your life. Yeah. So you can, you can zero in on the, on the, you can see the whole thing, like all nine squares, just the big picture, the bird's eye view. Yeah. You can zero in on one of the letters, uh, the boxes, is get the insects eye view for detail, or you can even go to the lower layer. And you can get the kind of the fish's sensitivity for interconnection and change. So you have okay. those three different perspectives or lenses on a topic. That's that's Excellent. One. And well, the other thank thing, you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other so, metaphor, so maybe you, you could just tell us about the the construction of your own chart and how you oh. chose the, the the subject for the top level of, of, sure. of the okay. squares. Yeah. Fair of enough. So, uh, I, I, will, I will actually share my screen in a, in a bit and so okay. that you can see the parts of it. But basically, you start with a theme. And in this case, it's Aikido and liberal arts. <clears throat> and what <clears throat> inspired me to do that was there was a man named Don Levine who uh, sadly passed away about 10, 11 years ago, but he was the former dean of the University of Chicago, pretty respected mm. person. And he was also an Aikidoist. And he had written a, a, a not a book, but uh, an article that was actually in the New York Times and it was published in, in various forms and in different books. He wrote a paper called uh, The Martial Arts and the Liberal Arts, something to that effect. And it was really good. I mean, it was an academic paper, but it was quite readable. And it talked about how the martial arts provide a, a physical dimension that is sometimes missing from academics and that might be an important ingredient to bring back. He was also an Aikido sensei himself. Uh, before I moved to Yamanashi and became a professor here at um, International College of Liberal Arts, I actually corresponded with him. He was in his 80s. And sadly, he passed away not long after that. But we did correspond a bit, and I never really forgot kind of that perspective. You know, why, how can we bring liberal arts into martial arts? For example, Bumbudyodo, Mastery of Sword and Letters. And how can we bring um, martial arts into liberal arts? So you have the, the physical the, 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 uh, size, not just sports, right? So <clears throat> that was sort of the, the core theme, and it just kind of came to me in a dream. and. And the, the key word there was legacy. So I, I turned 71 recently, just last uh, July. And, you know, when you're in your 70s, you kind of look, you look forward, but also you look back. And so what, what is the legacy and how can I kind of contain all of this in a, creating a mandala chart? Now, one more metaphor, if I may, uh, to explain how I use the mandala chart is think of it like a, a tennis court with lines on it, right? and you need to hit the ball into the line and <clears throat> there's nets between them and so it takes a little bit of discipline to uh kind of keep your keep the ball in on the court now i use the mandala chart to structure all of my college curriculum i make and all and all the books that i write for for some yeah. time 
you know, there'll be eight basic topics and then you just stay in those topics uh, and you connect them and it works really, really well. And I tell students, because they, they resist a little bit at the beginning because they're not used to it. So why do we have to do this? I say, well, did anybody play tennis? And surprisingly, not many raise their hands. I said, have you ever seen tennis? That's a, that's a for sure question. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there are lines on the court and there's a net. And what do you think would happen to your game if you took the net down and ignored all the lines? Your game would go nowhere fast, right? So those, those unlike mind mapping, which is kind of free and goes, uh, goes in all directions, uh, Mandela chart has to stay within those, uh, the framework. Now it's flexible, you can move them around, you can change the names and stuff like that. But uh, once you've set that, you need to stay there. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, so maybe I, uh, it would be easier to visualize if I would share my screen. So I'm going to do that now. Can you see this? Yes. Yes, got that. Okay, excellent. So you've got um, Aikido and liberal arts. And so I put the main theme there to integrate my own vision of Aikido and liberal arts, inspired by Don Levine, former Dean of the University of Chicago, and the paper Martial Arts and Liberal Arts, which is what I just spoke about. And I'd like to do this interview in two parts if we can. Uh, so the first part will focus on the first four letters and then we'll come back and round it out with the last four. Hmm. So, of course, um, we start with the lineage, and it's it's really a proud lineage, a proud in the sense of um, the Japanese word hokori, which means proud of rather than not proud, because it's not something you did. It's just that you're proud to be associated with it. Hmm. And I, I put this... Um, <clears throat> by chronological order. So I'll just go over these names, most of which you're, you're familiar with. But Suji Getan is the founder of Mugaidu Iaido. He goes, he goes back 340 years. And I'm currently studying with Takeda Hogyoku, who is the 17th generation headmaster of that. So I'm learning a real uh, sword tradition. And it's challenging. I've been doing it for four years now. And to go back and learn and relearn and and continually um, connecting with history and and all the kata there's just a, a whole lot <laughs> that has to be learned in it but but it's a really cool tradition have you ever seen the movie um after the rain indeed yes a great, it was, great it was his last film he he yeah. didn't even live to uh, to see it i think his son kind of produced it then but that movie suji getan appears in that movie you remember that's the teacher that he learned from he faces off against him, and then Suji get down, puts down his uh, sword, and says, "Mike, that you know, I you had no opening." So, yes. and then the, the the sword scenes in the forest where he's doing the kata, those are kata that we practice, you know. So it's it's really fun to see. Hey, I know what he's doing there. But anyway, the, so that's uh, that. And then, as you know, um, through uh, Tohei Koichi, my Aikido sensei for thirty plus years. Uh, Going, looking at his three major influences, which I, I like to think of as like stars in a constellation. So each one is a star in its own right, but they also make a pattern, which he, he made very clear in his own teaching. But you have Yamoka Teshu, who is a swordsman in the late Edo and um, early Meiji period. And he definitely influenced, uh, well, not directly because it was a different era, but his primary student, Ogura Tetsuju, was Tohei Sensei's teacher. So that makes me the grand grandson deshi of Yamoka Teshu. At least there's influence there. So that's that's definitely a proud lineage. Then you have Ueshiba Morihe, as, as everyone knows, the founder of Aikido. And um, that's just an awesome to be the, I guess you call the grandson deshi. And then Nakamura Tempu, uh, the founder of Japanese yoga, who also was the inspiration for mind and body unification and continues to inspire Otani Shohei today, by the way, which is pretty interesting, and who also uses the mandala chart. So <laughs> Otani Shohei uh, has been using the mandala chart since he was in high school, and he's also a huge fan of Nakamura Tempu. And then, of course, Tohei Koichi, and then uh, my contemporary sensei, Mariyama Koritoshi. So I look at all of these uh, wonderful teachers and the things that I've learned, because it's been like since I started all this 52 years, right? 
in all the books, uh, writing, translating, studying with them directly, and then thinking now, how, how can I c carry that on? How can I share that in uh, contemporary, through contemporary media to students? You know? Any, any thoughts or questions on that before I move to the next one? Or? Well, uh, just a, a, a quick couple. First, uh, as a general point, mm. um, as I look at the other boxes on, on the screen here, mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a lot of discussion about the brush. Yes. So the, the, and the, the old saying that the brush is mightier than the sword. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, line, a line of thinking and, and lineage as well. Absolutely. Um, as, as for Teshu, I, I, I'm, am I right in saying that he was never defeated either in, in, right. in, in a sword fight, largely because, again, nobody could see the opening? Uh, yes, uh, that, that, that is true. And also, he was probably, you'd say, never defeated uh, drinking sake. He could drink anyone under the table. And also, the, the number of works that he created, I, I'm very pleased to say that I now own one of them. A genuine mm. shoot work and it's just amazing you hang it in the wall and it energizes the room you can just feel it as something and his 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 calligraphy if i remember rightly you know you can almost see the sword cut yeah in, in some of his calligraphy yeah yeah well yeah. The, the strength and the line and the and and also he writes everything in social so it's a, l a little bit difficult yeah. to read uh un until you learn to decipher it but the energy of that is just just incredible so yes, to, right. yeah. Uh, so then I thought, okay, so what? In what capacity have I received or uh, taken on some of this lineage? And so we moved to B as credentials. So you've got uh, so Aikido uh, with, through the Yushinkai uh, from Mariama says I have an eighth dan from Shodo for the Zen Nichi Shodo Kyoku Renme, uh, which is. Um, Zen Nitten, you probably were, you, you were part of it, right? You, this is the magazine. Indeed. And so, uh, yeah, you, you, you won an award at one of the exhibitions that you uh, <clears throat> submitted to. So through that, which is the All Japan uh, Calligraphy Education Association, I have a 10th dan. And then Iaido, uh, Mugaidu Iaido, a uh, second dan. And then Namba, uh, I call the Art of Physical Finesse. That's a special shihan, Tokubutsu shihan. And then I just wrote down some of the names of the people associated with this. Morioka Koshu, who you, of course, met and studied with, my first calligraphy teacher. Yugensai Taiho, who's the head of the Zenichi Shodo. And Ishizaki Hakuryu, who is my current teacher um, and specializing in the small brush. So I'm actually quite actively in, engaged with all of those. So I'm constantly making exhibitions, going to, doing training and uh, as like I, th I think back to when I'd been doing this uh, Aikido uh, for 10 years, my father said, um, so when are you going to graduate from this Aikido stuff? <laughs> and I, so I said, I'll, I'll teach him a lesson, right? He says, uh, well, the, anything that has a do or is a way, you don't, you don't graduate. You just continue to study it your whole life. So he paused a moment. He said, are, are you sure you're not being taken advantage of? <laughs> <laughs> if he could see me now, right? <laughs> That's just, right. Going and going. Uh, but you're you don't reach the end because the journey is the is the is the path is the path, right? Yeah. yeah. The journey and the people you meet along the way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The the friends you make on Do you is uh, uh, Michino Tomo, the, the people, the friends you make along the way. And they're some of the longest lasting. You're looking back, you know, you meet people and you make friends at work or some hobbies and stuff, and, you, and geographically you drift apart and you lose touch. Uh, but uh, the people you train with, you, you, you know, you stick uh, together. It's really interesting how that works. And it's a great um, uh, passport to have as you travel around the world, yeah. either physically or, or nowadays, you know, uh, virtually. Yeah, but um, to so in in Aikido you can you can turn up most dojos around the world, the vast majority, and you'd be you'd have a very welcoming yeah um, hand in into their dojo. Yes, you do. You have a, a common language, and uh, and people are curious, and they want to know oh, where did you study, and you know that's 
that's a, 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 a great uh, cultural thing to share. Now, Maria Masense recently wrote something that um, is part of, you know, we have a motto that goes with the Yushinkai, and this, he actually wrote a part two of this motto. And the, the really interesting phrase in this says that there is no destination in the path only to take the next step. So you just continually take the next step and you think about that. Uh, that's what moves you forward. And it's a lot easier to take the next step than to try to achieve something that's way out of reach and have some ideal that you can't, uh, you, you never imagine you'd be there. So the, that, the, the, so the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I mean, Lao Tzu said it as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So then we can move to C. Yeah. So the books, uh, which you're, of course, familiar with, this was the first one that I wrote. I actually wrote this in three months on a typewriter. Took all the photos. Uh, that, that was really a labor of love. Uh, and that, that kind of uh, got me inspired on capturing uh, in print, the things that I was learning. Uh, a subsequent book, which you know, uh, actually was the version of the, the Shodo. Yes. Uh, Art of Coordinating Mind and Body and Brush, which is obviously connecting to the Aikido side. And then following that, uh, a key a road that anyone can walk, which is really Toy Sensei's biography. And when I go, and as a summary of the teaching, it's like, how many pages? Uh, 340 pages. Um, most publishers won't let you make a book that big, but the uh, president, Yoshi uh, san was such, such a kind man, and he, he basically let me write this whole thing. And I, I capture stuff, when, and when I go back and read it, this was, what, 19, um, when was it published? 1992, something like that? Yeah, 1992. And when I go back and read I, I remember all that stuff, but I don't think I could write that book now because it was all the things that were fresh in mind. Yeah. Or as we've been talking about the, the sayings of Tohei uh, as captured by his, um, his students. This is a golden reference. I mean, there's 280 little short phrases like the, we were talking about the one with, uh, if the world, if might is right, then the world will tear itself apart. We need to create a world in which uh, right is might. It's just these golden gems, right? And there were like 280 of them. And I translated them all, put them into that book. So it's like, I'm so glad that I did that because there's no other source for that. Hmm. And the book, books go out of print, but they're always available somewhere. And then uh, the more recent book, um, Song of the Brush, Dance of the Ink, um, which is kind of my main focus now in calligraphy. And then I've created apps to go with the with both Namba and Song of the Brush. So it's I guess publishing or content creation is the um, is the main thrust there. Just taking an inventory of all of that. Absolutely, and and, and not only wonderful reading, but you know just just a great record um, that that, that uh, can't be brushed away. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think back, you know, to 1963 and this little book, the very book yeah. I still keep it, you know, this book saved my life, you know, I mean, it, it got me on the path and uh, got me into Japan. And I think uh, it's so extraordinary that that book was at, on, on a bookshelf, uh, on uh, those little spiral newsstand paperback books. Yeah. yeah. And it just happened to be there, you know, I was like, wow. And but now you think of the opportunities, I think about people around the world who might be in a similar situation as I as I was and looking for something. But the touch points now and the depth just goes way beyond. Hugh, you know, I look at my uh, at the work of my students in calligraphy. After like just eight, eight weeks, say. And they are so much beyond what I. Uh, where I was at, at eight weeks, my God, it's like, you know, so I've seen I've seen some of their work. It is truly remarkable. It's <laughs> truly remarkable. It took me years, decades, in some cases to get to that level. And they're there yeah. in two months, you know, and so 
I, it, the, the, I guess the main concern I have is, and it's not that they got it easily, they did work hard to get it, but if they, the course is finished, they move on to something else and they might just kind of slip away and say, oh, I did that, you know, they might not realize what they've actually achieved. <laughs> And of course, it's just the beginning. I mean, they haven't mastered everything of calligraphy. There's so much more. No, and and indeed, your you, you know your young Aikido students making very rapid progress. But I think to to me, this this also uh, comes down to the quality of the teaching. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think that that's very important, um, and uh, probably more more needs to be done uh, to support the teachers in these in these fine arts to yeah. make the teaching yeah. Yeah. better because people can be very good they can excel they can be a shihan level in 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 various arts but uh through, through very dedicated training uh, but if they haven't also trained in teaching yeah yeah uh, some some of the message can be can be lost so i think the quality of teaching is reflected in the success of your students. Well, thank you. Except, okay. except me, of course. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's another matter. <laughs> but you've stuck with it how many years I, now? Um, I turn I turn to uh, poetry instead. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I'm still going. I'm still going in, yeah. a, in a small way. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, a student can actually make a lot of progress in a short time, and then yeah. suddenly, you know, they don't continue, or they, uh, one student recently who had, Gotten his fifth on, and he was doing quite well. He'd actually been doing Aikido before. Uh, we started a club. We were going to continue, and he said, "No, I, uh, I want to do something. Aikido is about peace. I want to do something with a fighting art." I said, yeah. "What? You know, how did that happen?" And I think it's just lack of ability to digest in ten weeks some of the deeper side. Yeah. Let's move on. Um, yeah. On to on to D. Okay, so. Uh, this is where uh, I'm now employed at the I ICLA, International College of Liberal Arts. And these are the courses that I teach. One is called Samurai Code and Culture, which is a Bushido, and we look at that from many, many aspects. It's really, really fun. I have students write, uh, uh, create a notebook, kind of a Da Vincian notebook of uh, capturing all their, their thoughts. And then Calligraphy and Kanji Culture, um, we, we do mostly with a small brush, but we look at the uh, eight character poems from the 10,000 from the thousand character classic 15 minutes to mindfulness with the Chinese literati <laughs> as I like to say and then the uh, Iroha poem and haiku and it's just wonderful I just enjoy it so much could uh, you could you just say briefly a, a, a quick word about the, the the college and how that started because I think listeners sure. may be interested in, sure. in that okay. yeah um, well uh, I had been living in Tokyo for many, many years, and um, I was just starting to get into radio and television, and somebody introduced me to NHK, and she said, oh, um, there's a speech contest coming up, would you like to be a judge? Well, honest, my honest answer was no, I didn't really want to, but I had, she'd done me a big favor, so I said, yeah, I'll do it. So I went there, and there were six judges at this com uh, competition, and one of them, uh, said, oh I, I, oh, I had been writing uh, an article called The Creative Entrepreneur's Edge, 800 words a week for four and a half years with no pay. I mean, that, that was the agreement. I wasn't going to get paid, but I, it was a nice discipline. And occasionally, the biggest reward was someone would read, would say, oh, I read your column. So one of the judges said, yeah, I read your column. That's, uh, I like what you're saying. So let's get together for coffee or something. So, you know, time comes, we're both busy. And the same speech contest comes up a year later, and he's there. And we have the same conversation. And he says, oh, let's get together for coffee. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. You know how you, time gets away from you. Well, then came to the year three, and the same conversation. He said, yeah, I said, oh, this is a Los Angeles. Let's have lunch. There's absolutely, it's just a greeting. There's no intention of, <laughs> of ever meeting. But in fact, five months later, he did contact me. So let's meet at the Tokyo American Club. Uh, and so when I did, he said, we're starting a, a, a new campus uh, at a university in Yamanashi. Would you like to come and be a full-time professor? I said, what? You know, I, it's like uh, I had never 
you know, I didn't have a PhD. I'd never been a college professor. And so usually you have to go way up. It takes years and years, assistant professor, associate professor. And he's talking about instantly becoming a full-time professor if the Ministry of Education could approve my uh, uh, my credentials for what I was teaching. And at the time, I was also teaching art of presentations and career design. But now, uh, to look at this list again, Aikido, Namba, and something called I Experience, where we take foreign students to, say, Edinji Temple. We're doing it tomorrow and have a tea ceremony experience and uh, painting sutras. So that's all. That's all really great fun. And uh, we started out, um, actually, when we started, it, it was just a parking lot. We didn't even have a building. But we had a brochure that had architects' drawings. And we went together to Europe and for about three or four weeks traveling around and visiting places like the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands, which was, was founded in the 1500s. And, and, and they're looking at our pamphlet with the architects' drawings and they're saying, um, why don't you come back in four years when you've graduated your first cohort? <laughs> but now I'm proud to say we have actually more than 50 partner universities and a waiting list. We're turning them away. Hmm. And we've got, you know, we're way beyond our, our capacity of students. I've got 40 students in my calligraphy class. They don't even fit in the room. Wow. So it's really, it's really uh, taken time, but it's uh, kind of solidified. So that's been a really good uh, thing. So this is kind of, one way in which through at first credentials and then books and then through teaching that I'm trying to convey some of the legacy that that's absolutely wonderful and uh, as I understand it your university and indeed your your home there is uh, on the foothills of Mount Fuji I think well, we can I see that out that of the window the, it's a it's, it's a great yeah. location yeah we're about an hour away from fuji i wouldn't say foothills but it's really big and <laughs> you can see it right out the window yeah yeah it's great yeah, yeah. so okay uh, so we've got to the end of uh, those first, the first four, four. Yeah. yeah so we'll take a break here and um okay. i'll just uh, clo close the session and then we'll sign in again and and round out the rest of it super okay thank you so much